welcome to this particular module uh, and as we have seen the last module about cells let us see in this module what is cell culture all right so if you talk about cell culture it is defined as a process of cultivating cells and tissues outside the body of an organism and when you do that is called ex vivo so if i take the let's say uh, a tissue from an animal and study the tissue is called ex vivo study or ex vivo study all right and if we are studying the uh, cells or we are growing the cells on a petri dish or we are we are studying we are growing a organoid on a petri dish and we are then loading it in a device or studying that particular organoids or cell in an artificial environment it is called in vitro okay in vivo is where in the we are studying the tissues or we are studying the cells within the body all right within the body outside the body in the laboratory so in vivo ex vivo in vitro this is easy way of understanding but if you want to define it the body cell culture then we have to understand it is a process of cultivating cells and tissues outside the body of an organism in an artificial environment like a petri dish which replicates the in vivo conditions such as what are the conditions temperature nutrition and protecting from invading microorganisms and when you are talking about invading microorganisms the invading microorganisms for the cells are bacteria which we call bacterial infection virus which we call viral infection so the enemy to the cells are bacteria and viruses okay so then we have to create an environment which will replicate the in vivo situation the situation within the body such as temperature nutrition uh, the co2 concentration the humidity the oxygen concentration right and to protect those cells when we are growing in the laboratory against microorganisms such as bacteria you got it so that is the definition of a cell culture so let us go back to the slide what we see is cells and tissue cultures are terms that are used interchangeably and basically denotes the cells or cluster of cells in vitro that means that i can say cell culture or i can say tissue culture that are used interchangeably because group of cells will form a tissue group of cells can form organoid group of cells can form spheroid group of cells uh, that's why we can say a tissue culture or we can say a cell culture cool so let's see who discover uh, first time cell culture it was first successfully undertaken by ross harrison in 1907 uh, <laughs> and this is just a trivia uh, <laughs> just for information uh, and the cells may be removed from the tissue directly called primary culture and this aggregated by enzymatic or mechanical methods before cultivation or they may be derived from a cell line that has already been established right three methods how first is if i take the tissue and if i do the enzymatic reaction then the cells will disaggregate right it will it will separate aggregation coming together disaggregation separating out so if i use enzymatic reaction i can disaggregate those cells second is i can use a mechanical way of disaggregating those cells third thing is i can derive further cells from the existing cell line it's three ways of doing it and all three ways are uh, given or illustrated in the next slide which is right over here and you can see here 
the first one let us let us understand this particular flow. So, you have a organ cells can be isolated or you can say the, uh, the disaggregated uh, by enzymatic and mechanical action. So, you can see cells here. Now, you have to grow the cells right and the growing of cell is because of the cell division that we have seen in the last module and when the cell reaches to a state which is about 80 percent of its maximum capacity we say it is a confluent culture confluent culture this 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 value uh, changes uh, from a lab to lab but but in general it is close to 80 percent ok so now we have confluent cells then what we do we have to do a secondary culture or a primary cell line that means that we will subculture it when we subculture it and we again start growing the things it is called secondary cell line we keep on subculturing it until the cell division continues up to final division that means that one time we have done the cell culture right see here you have taken the cells you have cultured it this is first time then you have confluence so you can do a second subculture so you can say second time then you are again doing it we say third time we are doing it fourth time doing it fifth time but at some point you will see that further the cells would not divide so it is only limited to finite divisions Okay. This is one way of doing it and we, we are talking about primary culture. The second way of doing it is say we have an organ or a tumor and cells are isolated from tumor and they are further cultured here and we keep on culturing further you see. So, again the cells division continues up to infinite definite divisions in this case all right but at some point you are losing the uh, property of the original tissues. So, I we have to restrict ourselves for few of the subcultures and then we have to change the cell line the primary cell line right or we can generate another group of cells from the tissue. And we will see uh, by how can we understand the, uh, the effect of effect of drugs when I say effect of drugs since we are talking about cancer we say chemotherapy drug C H E M O chemotherapy drugs or we say immunotherapy immunotherapy drugs or we say combinational therapy combinational therapy all right. So, we want to understand from a group of drugs for chemotherapy which group we have to use or I want to understand from the group of drugs existing for immunotherapy which one I have to use or combinational therapy which one I have to use then I have to understand the cell culture I have to use the different drugs onto the cell to understand which drug is more efficient or which has a better efficacy uh, for a particular uh, tumor of our and we can also design a patient centric what is that patient centric ok patient centric device for testing or for screening patient centric device for screening S C R E E screening N I N G right screening different drugs. So, the idea is that if you have a three approved drugs by a drug authority right and if a patient comes with a uh, uh, with a problem or it is a diagnosed with uh, let us say breast cancer. So, out of the approved drug which drug we have to use for that particular patient right we need to know which drug I can use uh, for a given patient. And for that do we have a patient centric platform or we are just relying that for the last patient 
showed a better response to a drug number 3 right and that is why for the next patient I will continue with drug number 3 out of 3 drugs available. So, how we can um, come up with a engineering solution and that means that can we design a patient centric platform all right. So, that is an idea that what we have to understand that we want to discuss. Okay, I will move to the next slide right? and we need to understand few terminologies. Uh, so, so, what I said is that we will be discussing that patient centric platforms and those designs at some point in this lectures all right, series of lectures. So, when you talk about terminologies we have first uh, term called primary cell culture and that term is when cells surgically removed from an organism placed in a <laughs> this is this is a, a wrong sentence when cells are surgically removed from an organ not organism okay, from an organ placed in, in a suitable cell culture environment attach divide and grow they are called primary cell culture. Okay. So, when you take out the cells from an organ and then so when you say organ, organ means that finally organ is like tissues, tissues forms organ. So, you take out the cells from the tissue and uh, when you take out the cells from the tissue uh, and you place in a, a suitable cult cell culture environment what will happen? It will attach to each other, it will start dividing and it will start growing right and that is called your primary cell culture. What is second definition? Second definition is cell line. So, what is cell line? When the primary cell culture is subcultured and they demonstrate the an ability to propagate indefinitely, right? You can keep on growing a next subsets of cells. Next one. Next one is adherent cells. And adherent cells are when cell grows as a monolayer attaching themselves to the substrate like glass or plastic. It is also called anchorage, anchorage dependence all right. So, this is the monolayer ok, understand this very clearly. Adherent cells are when cells grow as monolayer attaching themselves to a substrate which is glass or plastic and it is also called anchorage dependence. Next word or next term is confluence. The term confluence is used as an estimate of the number of adherent cells in a culture disk flask and refers to the proportion of the surface covered by cells. We, we told you right, I told you right that in the in the earlier slide you see a term called confluent you see here confluent culture right that is what we are discussing here confluence the term used as an estimate of number of adherent cells what is adherent cells we are just seen here right in a culture and it refers to the proportion of the surface covered cells that is why I said 80 percent 85 percent of the surface covered we have to uh, again subculture the cells. Next is passaging or passaging and the process of splitting of subculturing of the cells is called passaging. Easy right terms are very easy to understand very easy to remember. So, if I want to understand now the tissue culture process flow what are the tissue culture process flow let us see in the slide ok. So, let us see let, let me term like this 1 and this is 2 let us first see first one which is number 1. So, what we will do we will isolate a tissue we will dissect right. So, selection of required tissue removal of fatty and necrotic cells and then what we will do three things one is fine dissection by chopping down explant size that means when you, by chopping down the tissue further or we will take out the cells using mechanical de 
this aggregation or we will take out the cells using enzymatic disaggregation right. Then if I use the fine dissection, dissection then I have primary implants. Further if I go down I can have explant or I can have outer growth. If I have explant I can transfer it and then I can do the secondary explant culture. If I use for the outgrow then you can do subculture and it forms a cell line got it we have seen this part and same thing goes for this part right. Now, let us see the mechanical way the mechanical way of disaggregating cells will lead us to disperse primary culture which will further subculture and you can have a cell line simple right. When you talk about enzymatic disaggregation then there are three things one is called cold trypsin, second is called warm trypsin, third is called collagenase and the process is called trypsinization, trypsinization all right. Either you do with cold trypsin or you use warm trypsin and or you use collagenase. If I want to use cold trypsin then I have to overnight cold short incubation. If I want to use warm trypsin I have to use long incubation and repeat sampling while if I use collagenase then long incubation and complete medium. After that I will centrifuge the cells so that I can get the cells at the bottom of the uh, centrifuge uh, device. I, I will resuspend and seed the cells to form primary culture I will set subculture and I will have a cell line. This is the process flow for tissue culture based on three techniques one is trypsinization, second is mechanical disaggregation, third one is fine dissection or dissections. Let us see the second one process flow very simple hmm. here first is tissue explants are excised using sharp scalpel. Then mechanical deception by pestle and mortar then filtering using 0.22 micrometer filter. Third next one is enzymatic digestion or trypsin or collagenase by not trysin it is trypsin ok, trypsin T R Y P S I N trypsin. Next one is cells are counted on hemocytometer and is seeded into the media. Then we have to take a flask and we have to load 5 ml of cells into 25 centimeter square flask. Next one we have to incubate this flask in a CO2 incubator and when you do that what will happen the cells will start dividing attaching to each other and then we will reach a confluence state in about 2 to 3 days which is about 80 percent of confluency right. I, I already discussed this thing last time uh, that we have to attain a 80 percent confluency uh, when we are going to incubate the cells in a CO2 incubator. What, what is incubator and what is CO2 incubator? This incubator has a properties like it we had to maintain 5 percent CO2 there is a relative humidity of 95 percent relative humidity and then uh, the temperature is 37 degree centigrade. This is more like the in vivo situation the situation within the body easy this is what is the tissue culture and if I further want to go uh, and understand the subculturing and cryopreservation what can I do. So, let us see the subculturing again I will name subculturing as 1 and cryopreservation as 2. So, if I want to do subculturing I have to process this I have to follow this particular process all right. First is remove spent media from the culture vessel, add the pre worn dissociation re reagents such as trypsin, gently lock the container. Next is incubate the uh, cell, cul cell culture at room temperature, then add equivalent well two volumes of pre warm complete growth medium, then split the cells into two to three flasks and incubate the cells. So, what exactly that means? You have to take the cells. So, I will take the cells. Uh, 
like this right or or in a like this right then what I will do then I will, what I will do I will rock the container little bit rock the container then right then incubate the cell culture vessel at room temperature. So, then I will keep this for 2 minutes in room temperature after that add equivalent of 2 volumes of pre warmed growth medium. So, I will take this one right this was the cells and then in that I will add the 2 volumes of pre warmed growth media. Then I will take the cells and load into 3 different flask. Okay. So, I load the cells here by taking from here I load here and I load here after loading I will incubate the cells. Incubation is done in a CO2 incubator at 37 degree centigrade 5 percent CO2 95 percent relative humidity. Okay. Now, if I want to see cryo preservation what, what does that mean that we have to preserve the cells for long time for that first is remove the growth media and wash the cells by PBS and remove PBS by aspiration you have to remove the PBS. So, now what we have we only have cells then dissociate the cells by trypsin we will add trypsin then dilute the cells with growth medium we will add the growth medium and then centrifuge at 200 uh, G for 5 minutes at room temperature and remove the growth medium by aspirations. Now, here the cell. Then we have to resuspend the cells in 1 to 2 ml of freezing medium containing DMSO and finally, transfer the cell to cryo valves. Cryo valves are the valves that can hold the cells for longer time in a in a cryo preservation unit and then we have to incubate cryo valves at minus 80 degree centigrade before we transfer next day the cryo valves into liquid nitrogen. This is how we cryo preserve the cells now this is just a information okay. we, we have to just understand that there are this kind of techniques available by which we do the sub subculturing and cryo preservation. All right. So, this is the end of this particular module where we understood how this tissue culture uh, process flow is all about and what exactly tissue culture means and then there are subdivisions of uh, or some of the terms or terminologies uh, that are used in tissue culture. In the next uh, uh, module we will see the advantage limitation of tissue culture application of tissue culture and then we will see how a, a culture lab setup looks like and, and so on and so forth all right. So, till then uh, you just read once again understand this uh, lecture once again and then I will see you in the next module uh, have fun right uh, just do not keep on reading have something for yourself live your life enjoy your life go out play something do extracurricular activities uh, do not be a bookworm right very important to keep your physical health intact along with your mental health all right. So, learn these things have fun I will see you in the next module take care.